giant TCR Advanced Pro 1 2017 update slash bike check review. So we'll give you my latest thoughts after riding this bike for about 18 months now. Yeah, about a year and a half I've been riding this. I've been riding this bike exclusively, not been riding my other bikes. This is the only one I've got here at the moment. Um, what are my thoughts on it then? Well, I still love it. There's still a few things I don't like, but I'll come on to those in a minute. I'm using, first of all, the aluminium wheel set, which I've got for it again, just because there's so many hills where I ride and there's so many steep braking and stuff that I don't want to wreck the nice uh, carbon clinches it came with, so I'm saving those for another day. Um, these aluminium wheels are still going absolutely fine. They've had a hard life. The rear hub's on its last legs, but the bearings are so shot. Um, they're not that stiff, so I'm, I've got another wheel build in the pipeline. I've just got a Dura Ace hub for the rear, and I'm getting a special wide flange hub for the front. And we're going to use a slightly higher spoke count for my weight as well. But I'll come on to that in another, another video if you're interested. So, still got the vinyl wrap there, as you can see, sort of custom graphics I did for it. Still going okay, it's not washed off yet with, the, with washing the bike. Um, so, what are my latest, latest thoughts on the bike? Well, Having ridden some other bikes recently, I'm just I'm, I'm a bit kind of let down by the lack of stiffness in the in the in this bike. It's really uh, it's really light, and it's a great comfortable bike to ride. There's lots of deflection in the rear end in the seat post, but it's not that stiff, and that problem gets worse when you scale up the size. So this is an XL, and uh, they don't really upgrade the wall thickness of the tubes when the, they go up the sizes. So it is a little bit noodly under like really hard power, especially when you're standing up. And that doesn't, that's not helped by the, the giant bars I've still got on there, which have a quite a thin top. And uh, there's just a bit more deflection there when you're sprinting either on the hoods or in the drops. So the next thing I'm gonna do is swap the bars out. I know I said that I'd do that ages ago, but I still haven't done it because you know, the effect is so small. The weight saving of new bars is negligible. I just haven't really been bothered. But I do like the shape of these bars. Um, so yeah, just stiffening up the front of the bike is with components because I can't do anything to the frame. So the other thing I'm going to do is put a new wheel set in there with a wider hub at the front and try and increase the stiffness of the front wheel. I've just uh, been looking at the spoke tensions of this front wheel and they're actually re they were actually really low, only like 60 to 70 kilograms, which is really too low. So I've done them all up now with the tension meter to around 110, and that's made a noticeable difference, especially when you're standing up. So do check that because even though the wheel was perfectly true, all the spokes had come loose just uniformly. I suppose the spokes have just the nipples just come undone over time, and so that's one thing to check. It's really simple to check. I suggest anyone buy a tension meter and a park tool spoke key because it's invaluable, really. Um, what else can I say? The other thing is, I'm still finding the bike really long. You notice they've got the seat slammed all the way forward. It's because this bike in the XL, the larger in the XL, I've got really relaxed seat tube angle. So, yeah, this inclination here is really, really quite slack. I'd like it to be steeper so I can get further over the bottom bracket. And I've not got an overly long stem on there, it's 120. So, yeah, I'd like that to be steeper so I don't have to run the seat all the way forward. But that's just minor points. I think the, the, the giant design is in Taiwan. I mean, how many six footers have you got in the Taiwan? I'm pretty sure the designers in Taiwan are responsible for the geometry, so I kind of forgive them for making the large and XL a bit weird geometry-wise. Um, but yeah, obviously this bike is very light. I said about a bit of being a bit noodly when you're pedaling really hard, but it is very light, so it's perfect for climbing. Uh, I've still got the original Tegra chain set on there. I'm running 5234 with a really small inner ring there. I don't see why you'd want anything other than this chain set. It's perfect. It's reasonably light. It's very stiff. It's actually stiffer than the Dura Ace. Um, there's some testing been done on all different crank sets about stiffness, and uh, I'll try to find a link and put that in there in the description. But yeah, it's it's about 750 grams for that. I'm running 1132 on the rear. Again, I don't really see why you'd change anything other than that. Uh, long cage rear mech keeps the chain a bit quieter with the larger spread of gears. Um, shifting's as good as the short cage, don't notice the difference. Still on the aluminium wheel set, as I said, these have had a really hard life. The brake track is almost finished and the rear hub bearings are finished. There's a bit of play in them, but they're still perfectly true. I'm playing with the spoke tensions again on the rear wheel. Um, but like I said, I've got a new wheel set coming for this bike soon. I'm 
I'm saving the original wheel set that this bike came with, the carbon clinches, for, for another day basically, because I'm, where I live it's so steep and there's so many steep descents, I don't want to ruin those carbon wheels. So I've got those on another bike. Uh, I'm going to save them for the best basically. So like I said, the, the aim of the next kind of project is to make the bike stiffer just by using different components. So that'll be handlebars, um, wheel build, stiffer wheel build, different spoke count as well. Because for my weight, you know, I'm nearly 90 kilos, 2024 is just not enough. And the reason why we have 2024 wheel sets is because it's just a, it's just you know a marketing for the weight, isn't it? No one's going to buy a heavy wheel set. Everyone looks at what wheel sets is one of those things which we still like anally stuck up on weight, which is ridiculous. So you know, if your Mavic set comes in 20 grams lighter than the Shimano set, most people are just going to buy that, even though it's probably got two little spokes for most people. Most people who buy bikes, let's face it, they're not 65 kilos. And 20 and 24 spokes just aren't really enough for a really, really heavy duty wheel set that you just don't have to think about. So for my next build, I'm going actually probably 20, 28. I've never had a problem with front wheels really going out of true or breaking spokes if you use decent spokes like SAP MCX rays, which I've got on here. But I'm going to use a much wider flange spacing on the front hub, which should increase the lateral stiffness of the front wheel. Um, and that should be okay, but it's the rear wheel I always suffer with. I'm always getting spokes going loose on the non-drive side, even though the tension ratio is correct and they're even. It's just because, and actually probably if I rode on the flat the whole time I wouldn't get that problem. But when you are climbing a lot and you're using like the 32 cog on the rear, the larger cog on the rear, the more torque and wind up you're getting in the spokes. So if, let's say for a given power, let's say you're riding along with 400 watts on the flat and you're using like the 11, something like that, the 11, the 5011. Because the rotational, because you know power is a function of uh, rotational speed and torque, the rotational speed, the speed of the wheel is really high on the flat at 400 watts because you're traveling maybe 30 miles an hour. So that means the torque's really low, just by that law. But if you're doing 400 watts up a hill, up a steep, really fucking steep ramp, and the speed is like six kilometers an hour, you're at walking pace, and the, to, to, to equal that power, the torque must go up. So the torque that the rear wheel sees when you're in the larger cogs at the back at very slow speeds is, is really, really high. And that's why sometimes if you're on really steep pitches and you've got it in the 32 or 28, you can hear the spokes kind of pinging. So that's why I'm going for a, a larger spoke count on the rear wheel to try and spread the torque out a bit more. Um, so yeah, custom graphic, vinyl wrap still going all right. Other than that, you know, I can't fault this bike. It's absolutely perfect. It's got good tire clearance. These are 25s, but they're measuring more like 27 because the uptight rim is about 19 mil. Um, bars are a bit spongy, like I said. I'm gonna stick some uh, stiffer bars on there, but it's not such a massive problem that I need to spend the money, really. I just end up riding it. Uh, just clean the chain set. Long cage rear mech, perfect again. But yeah, saddle's still going all right. Not need to uh, change that off. Still rate this saddle, because I don't really know it's there. And uh, yeah, sorry about my voice. I've got horrendous man flu. I went out yesterday and rode 60 kilometers. For those 60 kilometers, I did 2,600 meters of climbing. <laughs> so my man flu was degraded. And I feel like turd. So I'm not riding today, I thought I'd give the bike a clean. Uh, Dura A's pedals as well, swapped out, since the last video, swapped out the speed plays. Went for Dura A's, you, you can't go wrong. They last for ages, they're very simple, they're easy to service. Bearings are really good, cup and cone bearings. Well, sort of cup and cone slash cartridge bearings. Um, yeah, that's it, still a perfect bike. Next thing to come on the bike, so like I said, handlebars, wheel set, and power meter. I've been having a battle in my head with which power meter to use for this bike. I really like the Quark D4 or D0, but I'm swaying towards now the Power 2 Max because with the Quark I'm going to have to use a GXP for this bottom bracket. This is a PF86 bottom bracket. And I really hate GXP. I just don't like putting all the lateral loads through one bearing. I think it's a stupid idea. And using the Power 2 Max with a rotor crank 
24 mil crank, I'll be able to keep this bottom bracket. And I've never ever had a problem with a Shimano press fit bottom bracket or a threaded bottom bracket. I've never had, I've been riding bikes since I've been like eight, <laughs> mountain bikes, and I've never had a problem with Shimano bottom brackets. I've had problems with SRAM bottom brackets, GXP, all sorts of press fit, BB30. Shimano bottom brackets, you can't go wrong. So unfortunately, I'm gonna have to go for the Power 2 Max NG Eco, I think, and the rotor cranks, which are a bit heavier than the quart carbon cranks, but I'm going for reliability and ease of use, silent use, not all creaky bottom brackets and stuff. And yeah, this bottom bracket's still going strong, so I don't really have to knock it out. But there we go, any suggestions or comments on the TCR? or what I should add and what I should take off, let me know. Cheers.